All right, Chris, it's a feel-good football Friday. We're getting started with four downs, and we begin on first down where Cam Newton maybe saves the season. Thursday night football, the Panthers hold on to beat the Saints 23-20. to Now, this had been a Carolina team that had been reeling, but all of a sudden they've won three out of four ball games. Maybe should have been four in a row with that loss to Kansas City. What do you think? Did Cam save the season for the Panthers? No, night? no. The season for the Carolina Panthers has been over for some weeks now. You know, listen, they have an opportunity. By no means has the wild card run away from them. The division hasn't run away from them. Nobody's really taking charge in that NFC South. But I don't think the Carolina Panthers are playing the type of ball that they need to in order to be successful. You look at what they did last year. They were able to take away the football. They were able to establish the run, control the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. And this year, they're just not doing it. Last year, plus 20 in turnover margin. This year, minus five halfway through the season. So this football team is not playing the way that it needs to in order to be able to win games. They're constructed to be able to do certain things, and right now they're just not being able to execute. So their future doesn't look great this season. So you're not buying this because I thought it was pretty interesting. Looking at their last three losses, they've all been by three points. It gave me the impression that Carolina might be a little closer than we're giving them credit for. Well, they blew a 17-point lead last week, and they lost to the Kansas City Chiefs. This week, they tried their best to do the same against New Orleans, but they were able to make enough plays at home to be able to hold out and get the win. But the way that they're playing right now, it's just not complimentary football, and that's not the formula for success for Cam Newton and company. I know that he was the reigning defending MVP, but just too many mistakes from him, too many mistakes from his football team, and right now they're trending down. All right, a lot depends also on the health of Luke Keekley. Took a big shot last night. We'll see how he fares. He's after. on the field too much. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's all over the field. That's He's for all sure. over the field, but he's on the field too much. All right, second down. All washed up on Revis Island. Jets GM Mike McCagnin this week defended Darrell Revis and his signing of the cornerback to that large contract, though. Revis really looked like a shell of himself here, Chris. Two-part question. What have you seen from Revis, and is this the end of the line for a guy who used to be the top corner in the league? Well, right now, I see a liability at the cornerback position. And, you know, it happens when you have a diminishing athletic skill set. But he still has the ball skills. He still has a high football IQ. So I think he can still be effective if he's willing to change positions, potentially go to free safety. But, you know, the Jets organization has to be willing to do that. And, of course, it has to be a cost-benefit to them. Uh, it's got to be the production equal to the pay scale. And right now, Revis, going into 2017, his contract is presently constructed where he's got a 15.3 cap number and he's got a $6 million dead cap. So I think there's some moving parts there. they got to restructure it to get it done to make it make sense for him to stay on this football team moving forward. But right now, staying at the quarterback position, he's just not an impact player. Uh, teams are taking advantage of him. We saw that last week with Kenny Britton and Los Angeles. Rams by no means uh, not a juggernaut, not an offense, explosive no. passing offense, but you know they were able to take advantage of a Durrell, an aging Darrell Revis. So I think they got to move some things around. They might have to move him to a different position in order to get the most out of him. Concerning stat: the completion percentage on Revis is 30 percent higher than any point in his career. This yeah, season. teams are game That's planning to throw at number 24 in green. Yeah. That's a bad idea. They used to go especially to when the you're paying a guy 17 million dollars a year. That's right. Just, All just right. saying. Third down, best of the best in the wild, wild west. Broncos, Raiders, Chiefs, all sitting now with seven wins. Chris, when you look at this group, a lot of talent, some solid football teams. Who is the best of the best in the west? Well, in order to be the champs, you got to beat the champs. And I know the Oakland Raiders have a regular season win over the Denver Broncos, but I still don't trust Oakland right now. It's a young football team. They're still learning how to win. They don't understand what playing competitive football in December in the National Football League is all about. But the Denver Broncos do, and the Kansas City Chiefs do. Two very strong defenses. The Kansas City Chiefs, although they give up a lot of yards, they create a lot of turnovers. Number one in the National Football League with 22 takeaways. So they're doing a great job. They're going to get even healthier this week with Justin Houston returning. He's a dynamic pass rusher to go along with D. Ford, who's really doing his thing now, 10 sacks on the season. So really impressed by what this Kansas City Chiefs team has done, and I think that defensive side of the ball, which is the strength of their team, is only going to continue to improve. Also, the Denver Broncos, they're going to get healthy. DeMarcus Ware should be coming back very soon. Of course, Aqib Tlaib should be back in the lineup soon. So I really like what they're being able to do. I think the Denver Broncos got to figure out what their identity is on the offensive side of the ball. But head coach Gary Kubiak has an idea on how he wants to play, being a run-first outfit, run-first offense. Not put too much on Trevor Simeon. Don't allow him to make mistakes and give the game away. But it's going to come down to the Denver Broncos and the Kansas City Chiefs. I, I do think the Oakland Raiders have a chance to make the playoffs this year. We could see three teams out of that AFC West, 
But I think it's going to come down to Kansas City and Denver in terms of who's going to be a real contender in that division. Should be fun to see how it plays out. They have four games head-to-head -head combined down the stretch here. Denver's off this week. Kansas City hosts the Bucks. Meanwhile, the Raiders are in Mexico to take on the Texans. All right, fourth down, the road ahead for Tony Romo. Despite Jerry Jones saying he has no plans to have Romo play anywhere other than Dallas next season, with Dak Prescott entrenched to QB, you have to think Romo is going to be looking for a new team. Chris, who would be the best fit for Romo in 2017? Well, I think there's a, there's a right answer in this situation, and it's clear it's the Denver Broncos. It's a team that's comfortable with having a veteran quarterback that's past his prime being able to step in because you have a championship defense. You got a guy that can be able to manage the games for you, facilitate that offense. It's going to be a run-first outfit with Gary Kubiak and the Denver Broncos anyway, but they need somebody that's able to make the plays in the passing game and somebody that understands the value of being able to punt the football and not making the critical mistakes that cost your teams the game. I think that's something that Tony Romo can do if he's available. And when I say that, I mean if he's healthy because it's a situation where he hasn't played much in the last two, two seasons because of the back injury. So you wonder if he can continue to hold up. But I think the Denver Broncos is a good place for him to fit, allow him to be able to play, and then also mentor Paxton Lynch at the same time, being able to help his development because right now he's not ready to step in and be the starter for that Denver Broncos team. So I think Tony Romo, the Denver Broncos, I think it will be a good marriage. Let's just see if it happens. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of teams will be lining up for Romo's services, but no doubt he's going to pick if he has a choice here, he's going to go to a team that's ready to win now. He's not going to surround himself with a team kind of No, rebuild. he's not going to rebuild this thing, but here's, a, here's, here's what I'm going to say about this. It makes so much sense that it's probably not going to happen. That's <laughs> how the National Football League works. But I'm just saying, I think there's a clear right answer for in terms of where he should fit in this offseason in terms of the quarterback carousel. It's the Denver Broncos. It makes a lot of sense. We'll see if John Elway and company can get it done.